Welcome back to Pastor Plex's podcast. I am so glad to have all of you here. I'm Pastor Plex, and in studio with me today is one and only Bill Munch from Redemption City Church, lead, lead pastor over there. Talk to us, Bill. What in the world's going on in Redemption City? Too much, too much, man. Good stuff, though, bro. Well, I'm so glad to have you on, and I'm excited for you to talk about some marriage. Dude, let's go, man. Uh, all right. That's where it starts. Are you- and I like your hat. You I like that old school, right? Yeah, that's, I was like, whoa, Houston he's an Oilers, Oilers man. I'm like, a loyalist, too, bro. I'm man. not a Texan. I'm not a no, Titan. You, I'm, a, I'm an Oilers fan. You're still holding on. All right. Let's go. Uh, is that Earl Campbell back in the Come day? On, Come man. on, man. Dan All right. Pastorini. <laughs> wow. Old man. I love it. Okay. All right. Then also to my left, I have Paul Kuhn. Paul, welcome to, to, to Pastor Plex Podcast, where... All great things happen here. Oh, happy to be here. Exciting. <laughs> well, great we talk, stuff we got coming up. Yeah, we talk faith, culture, and everything in between. And so one of the things we want to talk about is marriage, and one mm. of my favorite topics. So um, both of you guys have been involved in marriage ministry for a, a while now. Like, how long, yeah. would, how long have you been specifically, a specific marriage ministry? How long have you been doing that? Well, man, I, uh, dude, so it, at least I would say probably the last 12 probably about 12, 13 years, we've been focused on marriage. That's actually actually one of the ways we planted Redemption City Church. No way. Yep. Like, give, me, give me like the... So we, uh, we actually had seven different, uh, we call them intimate encounter groups that, that had about eight to 10 of our core couples in it. Uh-huh. So we had about 30, 30 to 35 couples leading out in intimate encounter groups. And so we launched our church on the foundation of man. Got to love God, but you got to love your nearest one, which starts nice. with your spouse. Nice. Oh, I so, love that. That's yeah, brilliant. Man. Okay. And so talk to us about Redemption City Church uh, right here in Brushy Creek. Talk to us about kind of like you've been around for how long and what's been going on. Yeah, man. So we planted in 2014, uh, Hill Country Leander mm-hmm. planted us and uh, Peter Horn. Yeah. Man, love that, love that guy. I miss him. But uh, man, it's one of those things. We felt called in uh, to plant in Brushy Creek. Actually, we started in Round Rock High School. Yeah. And uh, man, God was just opening doors like crazy for us mm-hmm. and just some supernatural stuff. And uh, it was awesome. So we've been at this now eight years. Uh, man, I, you, you know this in church planning, man. You feel like you've at times replanted three or four times. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we're still replanting, still <clears throat> planting. And uh, man, lost Round Rock High School through COVID. Went into the park. Man, God did some cool stuff there. Now we're in Elsa, England Elementary, right off Pearson and Ranch Road in the heart of Brushy Creek. Love it. And then had just some cool God moments where God literally, we have 12.8 acres now. That's uh, incredible. 12.8 acres of land. And are you, are you getting ready for a capital campaign? What's the plan? Just finished our first phase in that and, uh, and raising that up. And, um, and now we're just uh, we're waiting to get some things together so we can start phase one, bro. Wow. Way to go. It's crazy. Congratulations. That's a little work. Uh, clearly, God's working at Redemption City. So exciting. Amen. Paul, what about you? Talk to me about how you first got involved with marriage ministry, really reaching out to, like, tell us the background of that. Wow. For that, I have to actually thank my in-laws. Got married <laughs> <clears throat> at 21. I yeah. think they were a little worried about me marrying their daughter. As well. <laughs> <laughs> they, said, they said, hey, uh, there's, this, uh, there's this marriage event going on. We're happy to pay for y'all's weekend. If y'all want to go stay in a hotel and uh, go to this no event. To that? Yeah. And I was like, poor guy, you're going to pay for a weekend with my wife in a hotel? Hey, I'm all in. I love it. And uh, we just had the best time. It was something, you know, I wasn't that excited, but I thought, hey, if it meant a weekend with Beth, I'm all in. And it just, the what I got out of that weekend ended up being so great. And that just got us going. So we took that and we brought it back. We shared it with some people we knew. We started doing some stuff at our church, and it just, it's just grown from there over the years. Yeah. So talk to me, like, let's talk about what's the biggest issue that you guys are seeing. Mm. Bill, I'll start with you. What's the biggest issue uh, that you are seeing at your church or maybe in the marriage ministry that you are having to sort of wrestle with, like, um, for couples? Man, I, I'll just tell you where it starts, bro. And this is, obviously, all the stats say there's no difference between inside the church or outside the church. Right, right. Um, and I'll start it just to say, cause it started in our marriage. You know, okay. we're, we're 11 years into our marriage in Houston. I'm in ministry and, uh, man, we had this, this moment, man, it was our crisis in marriage. And, um, it was one of those things where, you know, here I'm at a, at a growing dynamic church doing great ministry. And my wife's at home, our three boys. Um, but two things we noticed, uh, one thing was this, is that, man, we were way overcommitted in our schedule. Wow. Like there was no white sport, no, no white space on the board. No margin. No margin. And so anything that didn't go, anything that popped up, man, it just created chaos. Um, that's the first thing, way we're committed. Second thing we, we realized was this, is that we were way underconnected relationally. Okay, what, do you, what does that mean? So that, here's what that means. Um, what I thought I knew about my wife and what I thought she knew about me, mm. 
dude, it was, it was not a deep, intimate connection. Mm. And so here's what it felt like. It felt like we were, um, felt like we were roommates. Okay. It's like, it felt like we were going, doing great godly things, going in the, in the same direction, yeah. just doing it. And here's the word, doing it alone. Yeah. And so for me, I really believe, man, that aloneness is the, is the key. And when people hear that word, especially in marriage, mm. uh, I it think resonates, I think. It resonates because I think there's so many people today who were married, mm -hmm. but alone in so, their marriage. So what steps did you and your wife initially take? Because like, it's one thing to kind of get moving. And yep. it's like, oh, <clears> we're in the process. Thing. How did you go from like standing, like it's, okay, we're alone. This is not working. Who recognized it? Who <clears> said, who was like, Bill, this is not working. Like, uh, who, where was that? How did that happen? Well, you know, so there was, there was some couples need couples, bro. And so, like, there was a, a couple in Houston, the Schraders, who, man, I just had done life with. And they said, hey, man, I understand you guys are, are just going through a crisis right now. Yeah. And they said, we want to sponsor you to go to, like, an event. And it was a, it was a Galatians 6-6 oh. retreat. Nice. And um, that's where my eyes opened to the idea of, man, is I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't really see my wife the way God saw her. And until you see people the way Jesus sees them, you can't love them the way Jesus loves them. Okay, so that, that's a, I love the way you're saying that. And I, as a pastor, I get that. But let's just talk to normal people. Sure. How, what do you mean, see her as Jesus sees so, her? So there's what that means, man. Like, um, can, I, can I love my wife even when she fails me, mm. even when I don't measure up to what her expectations are mm. or she doesn't re measure up to mine? Yeah. Um, attention, right? Like, do I really start my, do I live in such a way to remove her aloneness as a, as a wife, as a yeah. mother? Like, uh, being willing to like know her, like, hey, this is what she likes, this yeah. is what she prefers, and then initiate that without yeah. her having to manipulate or ask or, um, you know, it's just one of those things of, of taking initiative about deepening your intimacy because it's never going to happen by chance. Yeah, you got to right. choose it. You, you, yeah, you got to, I like that. You have to choose have it. To choose I it. like the language there because I think a lot of times, especially for men, we go, what? Yep. I, I didn't know. Yeah. I, uh, what do you want from me? You know? Yeah, and when people, here's, here's the thing that people want to say is like, well, you should know. No, you shouldn't. You should just communicate. Are you kidding me? And yeah. so we spend all our, you know, a lot of time saying, well, you should just know what I want. You should okay. know what I need. And it's like, no, no, no. We, we have to communicate that. Yeah. And then once you communicate it, then you get a chance to choose it and actually, man, put your, put your money where your mouth is. I love that. Okay, so, uh, so marriage ministry flourishing, you, you use that to plant a church. Yep. And so talk to me about uh, the specific thing that you're gonna be doing with our with our church here on February 4th. Talk to me about how that all came came up and then I wanna hear Paul, kind of your perspective on it. Sure, yeah, so man, we've been doing in and around the Austin area for a long time, uh, at least the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we call them keeping marriages healthy. We do yep. a lot in the community. This is actually a faith-based yeah. version, uh, man, because it's all founded in scripture. But we found that even even people who are far from God don't want to suck at marriage, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so we, we give them real relational skills. Love it. Um, understanding, we, we, we literally use the words of aloneness and this nice. idea of, man, you get to remove your spouse's aloneness. That's why you're on planet Earth. Yeah. Uh, we talk about, man, so then what does that look like? How do we then meet my spouse mm. at their point of need mm. versus judging them and mm. condemning them for their deeds? Mm. Like there's so much attached to what we do mm -hmm. in our marriages. Mm. And sometimes even the person who's doing what they're doing doesn't understand why and what's driving that. Man, that's good. Right? And that's so we, we help them identify that and actually help them be more proactive and intentional about meeting their spouse's needs. And then we kind of, you know, and Paul can speak to some of this too, but we, we then help them understand how do we, we, we don't get married and we don't get to the altar or wherever you do your ceremony with clean U-Hauls. We all have crap. We have stuff that's packed in boxes and we just say, I do. And we think, man, we're good. No. Yeah, I, I think, and I think nobody wants to think they need help, right? Exactly and I, right. This is where I go back to, like Tiger Woods has a coach. Michael Jordan had Come a on, coach. Yeah. You know, the, Tom Brady has a coach. Tom Brady definitely needs a coach now. But I mean, like the reality is like even the very best, the goats yes. of every sport, Let's the people go. that you admire the most have a coach. And that's so right. why would you not? Come on. I mean, if you want to be great, I mean, I think everyone's like, yeah, I want to be great at being married. No one's like, you know, I will think I'll just turn in mediocre. Like, I'm just, right. I'm here to like do the minimum. That's what and, it calls pain in your life. Yeah. 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 Like, I just <laughs> want to be a real <laughs> bee in your world. I want it to be bad news for you. And so yeah, I don't think anybody thinks like that. But when we act, we act like that, when yeah. we're saying like, yes. ah, I don't have time for that. Yep. It's odd because you have time. For, and this is where I feel like happens for people. And maybe you can speak to this here in a sec. I think we, there's a lot of really gifted men 
who are like amazing at work and they come home come and home. they turn off yep. as opposed to using that same entrepreneurial skill, that yep. same corporate same ability, drive. same drive Go get to su be successful right. in the marriage. Paul, how have you seen that in, in sort of in, in your, as, as a counselor, as a, as a human, how have you seen that? You hit it nail on the head. It's mm -hmm. all about intentionality and putting that same focus on everything else you want to be great sure. at. Yeah. You know, you want to have a great business. You want to have a great sports team. You have a great friend. You set time aside. You yeah. set effort aside. Right. You get skills. You work on them. You go out and you make it happen. Mm -hmm. Our relations are, are nothing different than that. And we're all really good at it when we're dating, mm -hmm. you know. We yeah. put time. We try think to about it, it. We try to put our best foot forward. <laughs> and then somewhere along the way, like you said, you get married and this, this U-Haul stuff comes, <laughs> and you just start unpacking, and, yeah. and you expect someone else to kind of pick up. And, and that's where it really takes kind of keeping that same laser focus of what are the goals for my relationship? Where do I want to be? Right. How do I want to get to know this person better? Right. And how do we grow? I and mean, we all look at how we grow as individuals. We read scriptures. Right. We work out. How do we grow as a couple? How do we take our relationship to the next level? Okay. Check, check this stat out. Yeah. So stats today show us that the highest divorce rate is between the years of seven and 10 years. Oh, interesting. Very, so people who are showing up, all of a sudden, okay, maybe this is a little bit of a safe place to start unpacking stuff. I always thought this was a seven year itch. I've, I've, have you it's, heard it's, that? It's true. Yeah. It's a yeah. true thing. It's a okay. true thing, man. And so people make that decision of like, ah, man, I don't know if I want to get into this with this person for yeah. the rest of my life. Yeah. Second, this is even more surprising. This is where me and my wife are. We're having to kind of revision and refocus in our marriage. 22 to 25 years is the second highest divorce rate. Wow. I think that's when my parents got divorced. So think about that statement. Yeah. Why? Why is that happening? It's because you spend your entire life getting a career, mm -hmm. taking care of kids. You get 20 years in and you wake up and look over and you and look like, at this person like, do I, even want to, do I even want to love this person anymore? Mm. Nope. Let's just yeah. bail, pull the ripcord. And, we, we, and you see this over and over again. That is fat. I mean, let, let's just think about that because I think there are couples listening. I mean, you're yeah. you're coming on year six, and it, it, you're getting tired, and you're about to hit year seven, and that seven year itch yep. is a thing. And statistically, you're probably going to be like checking out, and maybe right. you got young kids, or maybe you got no kids, or maybe where you're wherever you're at, you're like, it ain't worth it. I can't do, can't do another uh, another day. And the thing is, it's. And I always notice this. It's the problem is you're, what you're wanting is that other person to change, right? That's it. Everybody uh, wants the other person. If they yeah, would, if, if they, they, if they would, would just, that's exactly right. And then all of a sudden you sort of look. You don't want to look too closely inside because you. And, and what I've noticed about people is if they have issues with their spouse, they also have issues with their boss. They have issues with oh, their yeah. friends. They have issues with everybody. And the common denominator in all those relationships is them. But to do an introspective look and go like, right. I might be the problem. It, Dude. I'm not, and I think what happens, I think people need to recognize, like... We're all the problem. Yes, we all have issues. We're all it. broken, bro. We are all that's broken it. people, and uh, I yeah. think that's where we struggle. Is, is a, nobody wants to be a broken person. Nobody goes like, oh, that's me. I, I'm a mess. Please choose me <laughs> to be in the special help category. So, yeah, how do you, how do you first get... Uh, what's the thing? So, I love what you said about that stat, but what, do you, what have you guys found is a way... Because I'm sure there's going to be a spouse listening, and they're like, I... I Okay, I'll, t I'll accept that I might be part of the problem. Mm -hmm. But how am I going to get my spouse to come to a thing where it might bring out that they might be part of the problem? How do you get, how do you, because I know there's a lot of spouses listening go like, I wish my husband, I wish my, I want to come to that thing on February 4th at, at the church. I want to come be a part of that deal to, to get my marriage healthy. How, how do I convince? Well, that, that's the, that, that's really, a, it's kind of a fallacy, bro, because it's not your job to mm -hmm. convince your spouse that they're broken or you're, it's, you got to own your own stuff. Yeah. So here's the key, though. You got to put yourself in a place, in an environment, man. Uh, and since, since this is a faith-based version, man, that the God can both speak to you and your spouse, mm -hmm. right? You, you can't change. The only person going to change your spouse is God. Right. And then that spouse has to own that. Right. But I will say this: when you come to these workshops that we do, man, they're in the room with other couples, and yeah. it's a safe place. Right. Right. So there's, there's vulnerability, but it's like, oh wait a minute, I'm not the only one that thinks that I married the wrong person. I'm not, I'm not the only <laughs> I one. I got the wrong one. Right. I'm not the only one that this, that yeah. I, I struggle with looking at my husband and mm -hmm. actually he's like, he's a jerk. Yeah. Like, mm. And this is 8 a.m. in the morning. Right. So it's just like, you hear stories from other couples. You're like, oh, I'm not the only one. I'm not yeah. alone in this, right. not just in my marriage, but there's a community around me. Yeah, and that's yeah. so key is couples need couples. I love yeah. that. Paul, what, do you, what have you seen? And, and maybe it's, maybe it's saying this. It's like, 
going to your spouse and saying, I need this? Like, how would, what would you say to a spouse who really wants to come and have their spouse to come be a part of a February 4th uh, experience here where they would get their marriage healthy or at least start get on the right track? I think that's key. If this is what you need for your relationship, yes. feel comfortable mm-hmm. asking for it. We all that's have right. needs. That's right. And that's, that's step right. one. I mean, every time we do one of these events, we acknowledge right off the bat, there are always a set mm-hmm. of draggies. Mm-hmm. Always. Yep. <laughs> yes. And there was, <laughs> yes. There's always someone that's there. And, and if you love your spouse, do it for them. That's yeah. right. And, but what you leave finding out is you did it for you. That's right. You discover you. And, and I, you never see anybody leaving these events feeling like. I mean, people feel like, you know, it's going to be like, like it's a waste of time. Right. Nobody, Word, yes. pain, you're going to bring stuff up. These are no. fun events. Yeah. They're a chance events. for you Absolutely. to hang out with your spouse, the person you chose to spend your life with. Just to spend a whole day talking to them, getting to know one another. I mean, just taking your relationship to the next level. That's how you leave. You leave like, wow, this is great. This is the person I married and I want to spend life with. See, that's the thing. We forget why we even began to connect to this person. Nice. And so when people come to these workshops, right, they're thinking they're going to come and they're going to have to get in all their emotions, this and that. (laughs) That is such a small part. Listen, here's the thing. If the only time you're connecting and talking to your spouse is when you're dealing with issues, no wonder they don't want to connect yeah. you. I don't, I don't want to talk to you either. Yeah, exactly. How are you building in moments that you get to celebrate as a couple? All that right. you get to connect? So I have a question that just got, so we have a, a text in line. This isn't live, by the way, but this is a question that just came in because we talk faith, culture, and everything in between on Pastor Flex podcast. It goes, mm. we're called love God, love people. Why is it so easy to love God but not love our spouse mm. and love others more who are not our spouse? For example, friends, colleagues, et cetera. What, what would you say to that question? Like, I mean, I think that's a real, that's a, that's a raw question coming from a person at our church that's like, this is a real thing that I'm dealing with. Why is this true? So you want to answer or you want me to take it? You start with <laughs> it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'll jump uh, in. Dude, I, um, dude, I'm literally dealing with this issue right now. I'm, we're, I'm, I'm preaching on this Sunday. Here's the deal. I said it earlier. Yeah. Until we see people mm-hmm. the way God sees them, we'll never love them the way God loves them. Love it. Mm-hmm. The problem is we're so, we're more available to love people who are outside the circle, say in the community, trying sure. to live missionally with sure. them, giving them space for grace. But when it comes to those closest to us, we don't. Right, because we have baggage. I think that's the whole thing you say. They got yeah. the U-Haul of baggage that you've already dealt with. We've already done this song and dance five or six times of giving you grace for that thing. Whereas a new person has, you have, they have a backpack that you're like, oh, I'll take that for you. But when the person drops the U-Haul, you're like, ah, oh, I don't know if I can carry that. That's exactly right. right. Well, uh, yeah. Well, how I mean, that, that's yeah. a big challenge. I mean, you come into a relationship and you think your spouse is there to help you haul mm-hmm. that backpack mm-hmm. around. Yeah. And you don't realize they have that backpack too. And, and it is, it's a big challenge. That person knows you better than anybody and they mm-hmm. know your faults. And, yeah. and you're both coming from a place of being imperfect. Yes. Right. And we just have a way of, of hurting one another. And when you know those intimate parts of one another's, you can get in a negative cycle where... You know how to do it, but you can also get yeah. in that positive cycle. And that's what these weekends are all about is how do you flip that negative cycle into a positive cycle? Right. One of the things I love to say is that when we love, we're, you know, Christ, with the grace that he gave us, it was our benefit at his expense. And yep. so the thing that we're constantly having to challenge spouses is to live for their benefit at your expense. And mm. theoretically, if I'm living for your benefit at my expense and then you're living for my benefit at your expense, right. yeah. it's always going to work. It's but the right. reality is it's some... We're imperfect. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think what happens is like, well, who's going to be the doormat? I'm not going to... You know, like, yep. usually... No, like, what do you want me to do? Lay down, life, stomp on me? And I'm like, what you're seeing is you think by loving and loving your enemy, in a sense, this is what this is, that it's going to cause them to stomp on you more. But what I've seen with grace is that it opens their eyes to the way that God loves them because you're wanting to go with, I'm going to fight fire with fire. And when has that ever, like, when has that ever been, you know, you're right. I have been so mean. Thank you for responding to me in so so much anger. I am now going to be more loving. (laughs) No, that has worked never. Mm -mm. Uh, And so I think that's the struggle I think a lot of people are are finding uh, in that. So there's, there's, a, there's an interesting story, man. We, we, we teach this, this idea about seeing people. Mm. Um, see, here's the thing. God sees people both as fallen mm. and alone. Mm. Why do we know that? Because of Genesis 2.18. Mm-hmm. See, everybody thinks the first human crisis was in Genesis 3, sin. Mm. The first human crisis wasn't sin. The first human crisis was aloneness. Right. Amen. And right. that was before sin ever entered. So if God understood how much we needed connection, community, 
Uh, and so he gives Adam Eve, right? And so right. immediately we have this. Here's the point, man. So often we want to focus on our spouse's fallenness, mm. but yet not be a part of the solution of removing their aloneness. Right. Oh, Let me give nice. you an example personally. Yeah, yeah. So for years before I had had this growth in our marriage, my wife would come to me. She's home with three boys and she's saying, you know, she's struggling with depression or she's like, man, I'm overwhelmed. Mm. You know, I want to, you know, I want to hurt, <laughs> I want to kill my kids, mm -hmm. all those things, right? Normal mom stuff. Yeah, of course. And uh, mm -hmm. all my answer was, well, you just need more, you just need more Jesus. You need more yeah. God. You know, maybe, maybe you should go to that women's Bible study. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe you should be praying more. Maybe mm -hmm. you should, she doesn't, she, she didn't need more God. She needed a, a husband. Mm -hmm. And so she needed both God and me. Yeah. And that's his uh, point. Man, I yeah. love that. And, and here's what I see in that. Just speaking specifically into that moment, because I think this is me. I think this is a lot of the men at our church is we don't, I think what our culture is sort of taught is like, hey, listen, your wife is completely 100% capable. Like, let her figure it out. And so we sort of go, all right, well, I guess the house is your domain. Yeah. And, and we're like, I'm in your area now. I'm just going to try and tiptoe around it. If you ask me to do something, I'll do it. If you don't ask me to do anything, I'll be over here in my little world uh, and check in when you need me. And we've created two separate lanes as opposed, as, as opposed to saying like, hey, husband, you are head of your wife. Go yes. and love her. Don't go leave and her alone. serve her. Go and find her. And when she is crying out for help, it'll yes. be like, sucks to be you. Like, do you know, I <laughs> yeah. think that's what happens, though, for no, a lot. No doubt. And yeah. then on the flip side, I think what happens with a lot of uh, women is that they sort of feel abandoned or they feel like, uh, I guess I'm on my own. And so what they end up doing is they start telling husbands what they need to do. Mm. That you need nah. to. You need to. And so what happens, the man immediately goes into defense mode yeah. with like, oh, I, tell me what to do. Okay, well. So no, I'm the problem. I, I'm, oh, so what? Yeah. What? You want me to stop existing? As opposed to to, if a woman would simply say, I need help. Yep. I, sure. I'm sad. Vulnerability. And yep. like what most men I've noticed, they are great problem solvers. And when oh. you present the problem to them is like, I have a problem and it's, I feel sad and alone. And if the husband comes with like, <laughs> this is, this has happened, like comes with, well, you should, it's the wrong mm -hmm. answer, right? So That's like right. first empathy and then That's second, right. like right. minister to your spouse, her benefit, That's your it. expense. And I just feel like the, the the lack of, I just think male intentionality to get into the 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 space of their wife where they are they can see the issues that she's facing, they can hear her mm -hmm. heart and then operate in intentionality. I think I think that that this is where they do that. Most men do that in the workspace. They are present. They are right. aware. They're hyper vigilant Active. to like. There's something off in the office. Let me go and figure yeah. out what that mm. problem is. And then somehow we we feel like uh, she's good, and we just leave it alone. Whereas I think it's what passivity, a, man. That's yeah. all the passivity. So yeah, talk to me more about that, Paul. Just like oh from my your goodness, I just have to, have to laugh at that. Yeah, that very example that you just gave yeah. is what drove me and my wife <laughs> to church. <laughs> Early in our marriage, she yeah. would come home and she was just she had a rough situation yeah. at work. Yeah, yeah. I listened to it and I told her exactly what she needed to do. <laughs> All right, I thought, great, check. She just got quiet and I thought, I'd given her all the information. Moving on. Three or four days later, come home with the exact same Issue. situation. I'm a good husband. I patiently listened yeah. and gave my solution again, slightly different than I gave it the first time. <laughs> Didn't work. Huh. Come Sunday, week or two later, she goes, I'm going to church. <laughs> I'm like, why? Well, I got some problems at work. And I'm like, she didn't need anything but to <laughs> have someone listen to her. Yeah. And once I was told, hey, all you have to do is listen. Like you said, the problem is they feel alone. Mm -hmm. They need someone just to sit there and enter their world and be with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's it's just that simple sometimes. And then sharing your own world yeah is where I struggle too. Like yeah. I'm like, yeah, the guy's being vulnerable. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, talk to me about that. Why, why do guys struggle with being vulnerable? And, and um, in, even within the marriage context, what yes. do you think, what, what is, what's behind that? Man, I, I think it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna differ per men, but I would say, man, just personally, and you feel exposed when you share yeah. that you're needy, mm -hmm. like I'm very self-reliant. Mm -hmm. And so it took me time to build trust with my wife that if I share this, that she's not gonna see me as weak She's not gonna, it's not gonna uh, lessen me in her eyes. It's actually, it's kind of interesting. When you're vulnerable with your wife, it actually builds intimacy and connection. Mm. It doesn't push them further away. It actually draws them closer. Mm, I love yeah. that. So vulnerability invites vulnerability. And so it mm. doesn't mean it's not a, a struggle, because it is. Um, 
but man, you, as, here's, the, here's the reality. Guys, you can't be passive. You, you have to take the initiative and step in and be vulnerable. I love that. How have you seen, like, just couples that have experienced uh, conference like the one we're putting on here, how have you seen real growth? Have you seen, like, mm. beyond, you know, beyond the, the conference? Uh, because, you know, is eight hours going to solve my, my marriage? I mean, what, no. what, what is the ongoing solution? Honestly, man, I, I, I do these uh, a lot in the community without mm -hmm. the, the scriptures. I'm glad we're doing a faith-based version. Mm -hmm. But what I've seen from those who are far from God who come to this, mm -hmm. who don't want to suck a marriage, it's, it's one word, dude. They get hope. Mm -hmm. Dude, mm -hmm. hope keeps dreams alive. Wow, okay. Especially in marriage. Yeah, yeah. And so when they feel hopeful, here's what I found is they're like, okay, tell me the next step. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so then we kind of come alongside and say, well, listen, let's grab coffee. Let's go talk. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. And then we try to get them with other couples. Yeah who are a little bit further down the road right. to do life with. Yeah, that's great. And you come away with some tips and tricks from these yeah. weekends. Yep. You know, yeah. you come in, you have a time to connect, you get to understand yourself more, yep. but you also leave with some very basic things. I mean, yes. spending 10 minutes a day talking to your spouse in a very structured way, mm -hmm. huge. Couples yeah. checkup is Just what we call dates, it. Just yep. dates, reminding you, hey, Dates are fun. Go on them. Right. Um, uh, you know, this weekend we talk about, you know, kind of a marriage meeting. You right. know, once a week to sit yeah. down and kind of how do you set goals and how do you stick to those goals? Yeah. Just like we are talking about, how do you do anything well? You got to come up with a plan and you got to run to that plan. So, so yeah, it's a great time to connect, but you also come on with some great skills that you can incorporate as habits into your life That's it. throughout. And yeah, it's, it's kind of funny how we have staff meetings for every business that we have. Yes. Have a staff meeting for your family. Yeah. I, it's yeah. like no, you have to coordinate the sync calendars, do logistical checkups, make goals and follow up. I mean, there's tons of stuff that's going on. And yeah. I think what happens, the re reason why I think women get frustrated with men and then men feel like on the defense is men don't know what's going on at school. Men don't know what's yeah. going on on the sports teams other than they showed up. But, hey, I... I was there because all anybody talks about, my dad made every single game. And so they feel like they get full credit if they are present mm. as opposed to having like, there's a goal. What, why are we playing this sport? What's the sort of long range thing for this? And really having a discussion plan or a discussion with a spouse to kind of walk that through ultimately, like why are we even playing the sport, getting the grade, having the whole intention around purpose. And uh, at our church, we just call it couch time, which is like the 10 minutes uh, every mm. night where you, yeah, yeah like I, I feel like that is, a lost art and that all that is is basic leadership conversation check-in yep. empathy how's your heart how's your head yeah. it seems wild to me that we'd have to teach that but of course we have to teach it because it's not a Happily. natural sure. thing Be, and that's why family reunion is always hard because you don't know what to do unless you're actually going and doing like going to a football game or you have the football game on which is why thanksgiving and football are such a big thing so you don't actually have to engage one another because who wants to do that i think that's sort of the way our culture has sort of created family around sports or around things that you can like stand shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. and sort of experience as opposed to i actually have to talk to you find out what's going on hear your heart on, on yes. things i think yeah. culturally that's a difficult thing just for us as americans and i think what i think what you're saying is that if you're not intentional about it. couch time or a checkup, a daily checkup, or a weekly like strategy or a plan for the week to sync calendars, you are going to be always a little bit miffed or angry because there's an expectation placed upon the spouse. Mm -hmm. I thought you would because to you it was abundantly clear what yep. needed to happen, exactly but right. you never yeah. communicated. Yeah. And, and a lot of assumptions. Right. Everyone sort of lives with. Uh, when we assume and or make an assumption and we make an assumption make an ass out of you and umption and that is never good <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so uh yeah so let's so um let's sort of land the plane on this and uh I, I'm, I'm really excited for february 4th so um let's say i'm i'm a, I'm a couple i'm wanting to come what do i need to, to do to prepare or get ready is there anything i can do to kind of like study up like what do i need to do i, I feel terrified like i got to be ready for this thing they're gonna ask me something i won't know the answer to just show up bro it's yeah. like here's the deal man it, it you being there with your spouse mm -hmm. communicates so much yeah because yeah. it just says hey you're worth my time nice so just show up yeah everything else it is the most non-threatening mm. uh you don't have to talk out in front of the room nice the only person you got to talk to is this person you came with. Nice. And so that's the that's the only guarantee. And I promise you, as, as Paul says, man, but you will leave yeah. deeply connected. You'll have some skills that you can actually continue to use 
in your marriage, mm. in your relationship. Mm. Um, and it may be the very thing, the domino in your life, you talk about habits that lead to a marriage, man, that is uh, something that the Lord intends it to be, man. Yeah. Two becoming one. So good. What, what would you say to somebody, Paul, that's coming, they're not really sure, like, what to expect? That they're, you know, they've been like, ah, those people are all just going to talk about feelings and stuff, and it's going to be so weird. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you say? If to I was giving them anything, that won't be your experience. I would say is clear your calendar Saturday night. Because mm. the last thing you're going to do mm. is come spend a day nice. and not enjoy the benefits Hey, the Cowboys are out of the playoffs. That's so right. Just don't it's yours. <laughs> what a... Mi- Man, I don't want to get... Sorry. I, da- I'm just sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm very angry at Dak Prescott right now. <laughs> like, I, we pay you millions of dollars. I feel like I pay you. Like, so Dak, like... Sorry, was that, that was that too much, too far? No. All right, that may, that may date this podcast. All right, so uh, anyway, a lot of emotion there. Uh, no, no, yeah. Think about it, it's just a retreat. The yeah. same way you prepare for a retreat, you just show up and you bring That's yourself. And yeah. You bring yourself willing to open up, and then save your Saturday afternoon to go out and have a good time. Go enjoy a nice dinner, a yes. quiet evening. Do finish the night, um, uh, Do not, do we not say, hey, your Saturday afternoon. Say we should set up these, yeah. this couple to have some... Some, a pretty good Saturday, a great Saturday night. All right, yeah. so talk to me about this then. Like, is there any fear that a guy's, because like, a lot of times guys, they stonewall. Like, they, they you know, they're going mm-hmm. through, and right. then all of a sudden you hit that nerve. Like, it's like right there, and then they shut down. Men do, men are famous, I'm sure women do it too, but men are famous for going, I'm out. How do you prevent that from happening in the midst of a, of a day like that? Because I'm sure some, some wives are terrified that they're going to get there, everything's going fine, and then all of a sudden he gets triggered on whatever the thing is, and then he's like a brick wall. Yeah, dude, it, it, this, it, just like marriage journey mm, is, yeah. is a process, dude, mm. this whole one day, mm. is, it's just a step. It, yeah. is not, it is not the journey. Yeah, good. So there's not going to be this, all right, we're going from 1 to 50 in your nice, marriage. Nice. No, dude, we're, we're just, dude, we're just, we're just doing this thing together, and we're going to take a couple steps, and I promise you, man, they will feel it, and their spouse will not be intimidated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They will feel adequate. So yeah. that's, you're talking about adequacy yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. They're, they're, they will feel adequate because everything is scripted, and it helps them to kind of mm-hmm. have a language. So you've done this before. A little bit. Okay. And, and the yeah. date's not like we're going through and we're hitting a list of topics, of, right. and you're going to hit a trigger topic. And you're right. a screw-up yeah, again. No. Yeah. No, the, the event's all about kind of looking at who you are and what you bring to the relationship and how y'all interact together. So, so really the couple brings the content to the evening. It's okay, just a, a format a way to, to go that. through it. it it's, good. it's just a good time to, to get to know who you are and who you are as a couple. Mm-hmm. All right, well, hey, listen, if you're listening and you're like, okay, I have a specific question. I want Bill and Paul to hit this. Text us at 737-231-0605 or go to pastorpleck.com and I'll bring these guys back and we will have like a question, answer. Bring like, whatever you yeah, got. We will yeah. bring it. Because I know that these guys have a lot of experience in marriage counseling, a lot of experience in helping people get healthy with their marriages. And what these guys' hearts are is to see couples walking yes. closer to God, closer to one another, and experiencing real hope yes. um, that I feel like it can be very much missing. So, uh, hey, listen, thanks so much for listening. And uh, we were look forward to hearing from you. We were talking faith, culture, everything in between. So from our house to yours, have an awesome week of worship.